So as you can see, I've got the A500 back on the bench and that external keyboard that in a previous video we cleaned up. I did the tear down, cleaning. Now this keyboard was an absolute filthy mess. It's actually decent to use now. What's beeping here? So anyhow, I'm going to see but sorry, I'm putting leads back into the voltmeter here. So during that work on cleaning this, I realized that this really is just, an, I believe, an A500 keyboard that was just repurposed into that, that external case with the BNC cable. Or the, not BNC, the uh, cable here. Uh, a little bit of reading online has basically confirmed what I believe, that this should just be an A500 keyboard. Uh, my belief is that the pinout and the keyboard here should match the pinout back here on the A500 and then I could just build a regular internal cable to hook this keyboard up and not go through this mess we did in an earlier video where I built the DIN adapter uh, and put it all together and my other belief is by adding the extra two pins here on the connector and the LEDs I could get the uh, LEDs on the keyboard working as well the thing I don't know at this point is how if reset would work there is a missing transistor here, a little bit of reading or things I could find seem to indicate that's just like a 2N3904, just a little NPN switching transistor. I don't know if that's used in the reset circuit or not, it's kind of really hard to say. But what I am going to do here is basically buzz, with everything plugged in, I'm going to buzz the pins out here and see if there's a one-to-one -one continuity, and so far there is. That would be reset, which doesn't seem to get passed through. Okay, so it's not one to one up to pin three. So pin one, or what I'm calling pin one. Yeah, that's pin one, pin two. I didn't actually hook three up on the back of the, I think, four. Well, I can't see here. Through one, two, three, four, five doesn't seem to come through and six. So this really does say to me that this connector follows the same pin out as what's on the motherboard here. The motherboard's got pin one marked. This probably isn't in frame. It probably won't show up well. The motherboard's got pin one marked here, and there's a dot here on the connector to indicate one. But I do believe at this point. I could just build up a cable that was one to one. And of course, I need to bring uh, the two LED pins across as well. That would be one to one and would allow me to use this keyboard without this ugly kludge here uh, that we put on. So I think I'm going to go ahead and tackle that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, get a couple of LEDs in here. At least see if I can get some LED indicators to work. Uh, and see if I can get a reset to go. So uh, I think we'll tackle replacing this little right angle connector here next. So I think I've got everything here I'm going to need for the build and my just collection of stuff for these little eight position connectors, a set of pins that go into them. I've got a little right angle eight pin connector here to replace this with. The pin length isn't as long, but I do believe uh, this will go on just fine. Uh, so really the first thing I think I need to tackle here is removing that right angle connector and clearing out the solder holes uh, on the other two pins. So let's go ahead and do that. Get the right glasses here so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, the tip's really dry. Oh, I got the large. I think I've got the wrong tip on it. And I do. I need to hot swap the tips. That's just wonderful. I should have checked the tips before I powered it up. So, got the 
tool here and that is definitely hot. The hot tip has been dropped over there on a piece of metal to cool off. The tip's actually got some glue or something on it. I wonder what that is. We're going to pick that up. A little piece of something melted down onto it. Drop that over here. Get it latched down on. There it goes. Heat this back up. That'll take a minute here. You know, really, if this keyboard will work, and I'm confident it'll sit down in an A500 case, all I really need at this point is an A500 case to kind of complete this build. Uh, let that heat for a second more. It doesn't heat up pretty quick. And as the rest of the mass was already hot. And let's see if I can get these to... And it just fell out. There's two other solder pads here that need to be cleared to make room for the eight way. I think that has got it. We're just going to replace this with a little eight-way connector. We'll need to tack that in place. sit for a second it looks straight just go ahead and solder him up we flow the one I tapped and we swap that out and drop the little header I removed into my box of headers is can be reused potentially at a future date. That should allow this cable to come up and clip on there. Let me set that aside. Now really the challenge. I find working with these little connectors fiddly. I've never really found a good way to actually work with them, what I do with the ribbon cable. That end looks pretty square, that end isn't. Go ahead and square the end off. Find the uh, blade. Hopefully I can get these to zip apart. Probably shouldn't be cutting down into the surface of the anti-static mat. Hopefully these will not just zip back. And of course not. to do here as what I've got to grip onto is getting rather small. Let's see if I can get these two to zip apart. That's one end. No, 
I'm finding empty A500 cases available in Europe, especially in Germany. The cases itself are 20 to $50 US, but the shipping essentially doubles the cost. And I just don't want to spend that kind of money. If any of the viewers out there know of an A500 case, uh, that somebody's willing to let go at a reasonable price, I'd be interested. It would be nice to get the A500 into an actual case. Uh, there's one, I think, at the moment on eBay up in Canada. It's got a motherboard with it. Uh, the motherboard's been stripped. I think most of the chips are missing. Uh, obviously not working case is in reasonable shape. It's had some damage uh, around the floppy connector and I think it's missing the, the trap door and the rear side port cover. Let me strip these back a bit. Hopefully I didn't... Oh, that's what I was afraid of. I've been a hard time stripping these. I guess the proper tool here would help. I don't have a proper strip tool. I'm just having no luck at all. I'm actually losing wire as well. Let me try a different pair here. I'm going to have to trim these back and try again. Yeah, see, usually it just nips down like that. Why? that was acting up the way it was. Let me trim these down flush again. And try again. Hmm. No idea why I had so much difficulty the first time. I'm going to want to get all of these stripped and tin before I even put connectors on because if I end up with one too short because I break it or cut it off during stripping I don't want to have to undo all the work so yeah these are stripping just fine I wonder if I was holding the other cutters the other direction or maybe they're just sharper I am wearing better glasses now so I can see better what I'm doing. That might be the difference as well. I've had a couple of viewer comments about, you know, you know, the links I'm going here to get working hardware and acknowledge that here in the US uh, it's a lot harder to find reasonably priced Amiga hardware uh, where it's apparently still readily available in Europe so that's much better. Let's walk through the other side and do the same thing. Strip that back a little further. I did intentionally find a piece of ribbon cable with the pin 1 uh, red indicator on it to help make sure I get this on in the right orientation every time. did see a couple of posts where people believed the cable had been put on backwards and had uh, caused damage to the keyboard itself. Given the pin out, I don't know how likely it is or isn't to damage something, so again, it's an easy precaution to take. these. I always end up soldering them as well. 
part of that may be I don't have a crimp tool for them. Let me dump a few out here. So it looks to me like I should just be able to honestly fold the wire back. slide it in and crimp it. Problem here is without the right tool, with the insulation the diameter is a little bit big to crimp. Can I actually hold this without damaging it? connection? I don't honestly know. Apologies for the washing machine behind me. Very fiddly. I do have the better glasses on. Very, very fiddly. I'd be better off just soldering these. Hate to say it, I think I'm going to be better off just soldering them. They really don't twist well. Well, we'll try soldering instead. connector this orientation so I really want pin one over here to the right no idea if I'm going to be able to pull this off or not Get the solder in that Wrong end. Now the question is, will this actually snap in? without having been crimped, and it did. So I'm good with that, so let me release it here. Uh, just a tiny little flap, and pull it back out. Assuming I can get it to release and pull back out. There it comes. I will want to respring that now that I've pushed it flat. I think it's just walk through the rest of them with the same process. I do 
want to keep them all oriented the same direction. Well, it took longer to cool than I expected. That actually had a couple little pieces of wire jut out the side. steadier here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten. This is supposed to be eight. I forgot to zip two of the leads off the ribbon cable. This was a ten conductor, and I believe we need eight. Just get rid of those. They're not needed. solder to that first. Yeah, sorry for the lack of running commentary. I am kind of focused here on this. Those are all the same orientation. Go ahead and crimp the little ears in a little bit just because I can. There's a loose wire jutting out there that didn't get trapped. Go ahead and remove that. Hopefully. We've got one side of a cable here. Now it has to go in this orientation here. The little latch that catches in the slots on this have to be aligned up with the slot. I got to work all these in. Three, four. Let me get them all started before I seat it because I didn't leave myself a lot of length in the ribbon cable between these. But hopefully, I can get those all to seat. One's 
going to be stubborn. Why is that one being stubborn? You probably can't hear it, I'm sure you can't, but I can hear the little pins popping up as these lock into place. Those all look good. This will go on here. This orientation, it's a good positive lock. Build one for the other side. Go ahead and assemble the other side. I'll do that off camera since it'll be a repeat of this. Uh, and we'll go from there. We've got the cable assembled. And it really should just be a matter of getting it on the right orientation there. And the right orientation here. And done. That should get me a workable keyboard cable. Uh, of course, I have to power this up and test it, but very nice. Uh, I've got the ability now to put this together, hopefully inside of a case at some point. So uh, I think I will end this little video segment here. I've got to get everything set up to be able to power this Amiga up, and I don't have everything on the bench yet to do that. So we'll tackle that in a future video. Uh, anyhow, uh, we'll talk soon. Thank <laughs> you.